happy to be here. So today I'm going to show you how to crochet this fun little mushroom jewelry holder. It's a great way to store all your fun jewelry and it works up super easily and super quickly. If you already follow along with my tutorial on how to make the mushroom and you have that done, you can go ahead and skip further into the video where I show you how to make the green base. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe for more tutorials just like this and if you want to follow along with the written pattern as well, I have the link to my shop in the description below. The materials you'll be needing for today include your crochet hook, Today we'll be using a size 3.5mm or an E4, a stitch marker, your yarn needle, a pair of scissors, and three different colors of yarn, one for the base of the jewelry holder, one for the cap of the mushroom, and one for the stem and accent spots on the mushroom as well. We'll also be needing a small amount of stuffing. So let's get started! Begin with the mushroom cap yarn color of your choice, here I'll be using red. For round 1, we're going to be making a magic ring of 6 on crochet. So begin by making the magic ring, then taking it off your fingers and chaining 1. Now we will insert 6 on crochet into this magic ring. Once we've done our 6 on crochet, we can go ahead and close the magic ring up. Now we can insert our stitch marker. And we're done with round 1. For round 2, we're going to increase in each of the 6 stitches. So going to that first stitch, we're going to make 1 on crochet. And then going in that same stitch, we're going to make our second single crochet. Now we're going to repeat this process for the remaining five stitches. Okay, so now we're done with round two, we can go ahead and place our stitch marker back into the last stitch of the round. After the round two, we should have 12 single crochet. For round three, we're going to increase in the first stitch. So go into that first stitch and place two single crochet. And then moving on to the second stitch, we will place one single crochet. We'll repeat this pattern for the remaining 10 stitches. Okay, so now we're done with round 3, we can go ahead and place our stitch marker back into the round. After round 3, we should have 18 single crochet. For round 4, we're going to single crochet once into each of the 18 stitches. So going to that first stitch, we're just going to place one single crochet and then move on to their second stitch. We're going to repeat this pattern all the way around until we have 18 single crochet.
So at the end of round 4, we should still have 18 single crochet. We can then place our stitch marker back into our last stitch of the round and begin round 5. For round 5, we're going to increase in the first stitch. So go into that first stitch and make 1 single crochet, into that same stitch and make 2 single crochet. Then going into the second stitch, we're going to make 1 single crochet. And into the third stitch, we're going to make 1 single crochet there as well. But now we're going to repeat these steps for the remaining 15 stitches. At the end of round 5, we should have 24 single crochet. We can now place our stitch marker and begin round 6. For round 6, we're going to single crochet one stitch into each of the 24 stitches. At the end of round 6, we should still have 24 single crochet. We can then place our stitch marker back into that last stitch of the round and begin round 7. For round 7, we're going to increase in the first stitch. So go into that first stitch and make 2 single crochet. And then single crochet once into each of the next 3 stitches. So that's 1, 2, and 3. We will now repeat this pattern for the remaining 20 stitches. At the end of round 7, we should have 30 single crochet. We can now place our stitch marker back into the last stitch of the round and begin round 8. For round 8, we're going to single crochet in each of the 30 stitches.
After round 8, we should still have 30 silk crochet. We can now place our stitch marker back into the last stitch of the round and begin round 9. For round 9, we're going to increase in the first stitch, so go into that first stitch and make 2 silk crochet, and then silk crochet it once into each of the next 4 stitches. 1, 2, 3, and 4. Now repeat this for the remaining 25 stitches. At the end of round 9, we should have 36 single crochet. We can now replace our stitch marker and begin round 10. For round 10, we're going to be working a little bit differently. We're only going to be working in the front loop. So this loop right here. We're going to work in this loop only, ignoring this back loop. So just in this front loop. Okay, so going to that front loop only, we're going to make 2 single crochet. So this is one single crochet and going to that same loop, make one more single crochet. We will then front loop single crochet in the next eight stitches. So this is one, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, and eight. We will now repeat this pattern for the remaining 27 stitches. Okay, so here I'm just going to make one sewn crochet and then a slip stitch to end off this round. At the end of round 10, we should have 40 single crochet. We can then fasten off, leaving a long tail.
We can then hide the tail and I'll meet you back when that is done. Okay, so here I have the tails hidden and this is how our cap should look. We now have the option to add the white accent spots that go along the top of the cap. This part is optional which means you don't have to add them, but I'm going to show you how to add them here. Start by cutting a long piece of the white colored yarn or color yarn of your choice. We can then thread it onto our needle. And then use this piece to sew lines all around the mushroom cap. You want to keep in mind that we should be sewing the lines above the loops that we have made in round 10. So going from the inside of the cap to the outside, leaving a little bit of a tail, we will just randomly sew lines all around the cap. I did mine are random, but you can also arrange them in a pattern or however you like. So you just go from the back and then pull it out to the front and back into the back of the cap. I'm just going to speed up this part here and I'll meet you back after the tails are hidden and I'm all done with the lines. Okay, so now here's the cap. I finished all my spots and now we're ready to move on to the next step which is to make the stem of the mushroom. Okay, so for the stem, we're going to use the white, off-white color, or the color of your choice, and we're going to begin round one by making a magic ring of six seal crochet. So we're taking our hook and our yarn, begin by making a magic ring. We will then chain one and insert six seal crochet into this magic ring. Once we have six stone crochet, we can go ahead and close the magic ring up. We will then insert our stitch marker into the last stitch of the round and begin round two. For round two, you're going to increase in each of the six stitches. So going to that first stone crochet, We're going to place two single crochet into that same stitch. So this is going to be number one, and this is going to be number two. We will now repeat this for the remaining five stitches. At the end of round two, we should have 12 seal crochet. We can now put our stitch marker back into that last stitch of the round and begin round three. For round three, you're going to increase in the first stitch. So go into that first stitch and make two seal crochet one and two and then single crochet once into the next stitch. We will now repeat this pattern for the remaining 10 stitches.
At the end of round 3, we should have 18 seal crochet. We can then go ahead and place that stitch marker back into that last stitch of the round and begin round 4. For round 4, we're going to be working in the back loops only. So ignoring the front loop, we're only going to be working in this back loop. Right here. Okay, so not this front loop, only in this back loop. So going into that back loop, we're going to make one single crochet in each of the 18 back loops. So that's one single crochet, and this is going to be our second single crochet. Now we're just going to repeat this all the way around. At the end of round 4, we should still have 18 single crochet. We can go ahead and place that stitch marker back to the last stitch of the round and begin round 5. Rounds 5 through 6 are repeating this same pattern of just single crocheting in each of the 18 stitches, working with both loops again. I'm just going to speed up this part for you since rounds 5 through 6 are just repeating single crochets. Okay, so at the end of round 5 and 6, we should still have 18 single crochet. We can now begin round 7. We're going to begin by decreasing using the first two stitches, and then single crocheting once in the next four stitches. So this is 1, 2, 3, and 4. We will then repeat this pattern for the remaining 12 stitches. Okay, so at the end of round 7, we should have 15 single crochet. We can then insert our stitch marker back into the last stitch of the round and begin round 8. For round 8, we're going to begin by making a decrease using the first two stitches. We're then going to single crochet once in each of the next three stitches. 
So this is going to be our first single crochet, our second single crochet, and our third. We will now repeat these steps for the remaining 10 stitches. At the end of round 8, we should have 12 single crochet. We can now place our stitch marker back to the last stitch of the round and begin round 9. For round 9, we are going to single crochet once into each of the 12 stitches. At the end of round 9, we should still have 12 single crochet. We can now go ahead and place our stitch marker back into the last stitch of the round and begin round 10. For round 10, we're going to begin by making a decrease using the first two stitches. Now we are going to single crochet once into each of the next four stitches. So here's our first single crochet, then our second, and our third, and our fourth. Now I repeat this for the remaining six stitches. At the end of round 10, we should have 10 single crochet. We can now go ahead and place our stitch marker back to the last stitch around and begin round 11. Rounds 11 through 13 are just single crocheting once in each of the 10 stitches. Since rounds 11 through 13 are just repeating the same pattern single crochets, I will run through this part and meet you back to start round 14. Okay, so at the end of round 11s through 13, we should still have 10 single crochet, and we can begin round 14. Begin by placing 2 single crochet into that first stitch, then single crochet once into the next stitch. Now repeat this pattern for the remaining 8 stitches.
At the end of round 14, we should have 15 stone crochet. We can now go ahead and place our stitch marker back into that last stitch around and begin round 15. For round 15, we're going to start by placing 2 stone crochet into the first stitch to make an increase, and then single crochet once into each of the next 2 stitches. Now repeat this for the remaining 12 stitches. At the end of round 15, we should have 20 stone crochet. We can now go ahead and place our stitch marker back into the last stitch around and begin round 16. For round 16, we're going to begin by placing 2 single crochet into the first stitch to make an increase, and then single crochet once into each of the next 3 stitches. Now repeat this for the remaining 16 stitches. At the end of round 16, we should have 25 stone crochet. We can now go ahead and place our stitch marker back to the last stitch around and begin round 17. For round 17, we're going to begin by placing 2 stone crochet into the first stitch to make an increase, and then single crochet once into each of the next 4 stitches. We can now repeat this steps for the remaining 20 stitches. At the end of round 17, we should have 30 stone crochet. We can now go ahead and place our stitch marker back to the last stitch around and begin round 18. For round 18, we're going to begin by placing 2 stone crochet in the first stitch to make an increase, and then stone crocheting in the next 4 stitches. We can now repeat this pattern all the way around for the remaining 25 stitches.
At the end of round 18, we should have 36 in crochet. We can now slip stitch to end off the round and fasten off, leaving an extra long tail for sewing. Okay, so this is how the finished stem should look. Our next step is going to be the sew the stem to the cap. So for this part, you're going to need your stem, your cap, your yarn needle, a stuffing stick, and your stuffing. So taking your stem, stuffing stick, and stuffing, we're going to stuff the stem first. Okay, so now here's how the stem should look after we have finished stuffing. We will now use the long tail we left to sew the two pieces together. For a more seamless join, we can hide this tail better into the stitches of the round. So going to that next stitch from where we fastened off, and then going to the last stitch where we had fastened off. This just creates a little more of a seamless join. Now we're ready to sew the pieces together. So bring in our cap and insert your needle through the cap in round 10. We'll just be working through the loops that we didn't work in in round 10. So grab your cap, go in through that first stitch and then go into the back loop of the stem. So we have one loop and one loop from each of the two pieces that we can pull through and repeat that process. So go into the loop in round 10 and then the back loop of the stem and we're just going to repeat this all the way around until you have a few stitches remaining to leave room for stuffing later on. Since this is just a repeating process around, I will meet you back here when we have just those remaining few stitches left. Okay, so now I have just a few stitches left for stuffing, and we can go ahead and stuff the mushroom cap. We want to make sure to only stuff it enough so that the stem lays nicely later on. Just like this. Now we can finish sewing the two pieces together and then hide any remaining tails. Okay, so making this last stitch, we can just bring it down here into the stem so that we can hide the tails. Now we can just cut the yarn. And tuck the remaining tail into the stem. We are now done sewing the two pieces together. This is how the finished mushroom should look.
So the next step is going to be to add the gills. This is optional, which means you don't have to add them if you don't like, but I'm going to show you how to do so here. So for the gills, you're going to need your color of choice. Here I'm just going to be using the same color I used for the stem. And we're going to cut a long piece of it. Now we're going to thread it through our needle. Okay, so now taking our finished mushroom, starting anywhere on the edge of our stem, we will insert our needle and then insert our needle into the 16th row of the stem. So just like this, then we're going to pull through, leaving a little bit of a tail, and go back up into the seam of the mushroom and back down into the 16th row of the stem. Pull through and we have created our first gill. Now repeat the pattern from step 2 all the way around the mushroom until you're happy with the amount and the arrangement. So go into the 16th row, then back up to the seam, and then back into the 16th row, all the way around. Since we are repeating this process all the way around to create our gills, I will speed up here and meet you back to finish up. Okay, so here I'm done with all the gills and now I'm just going to hide the tails and we are done. You can weave in the ends or you can just tie the two ends to a knot like I'm doing here. Now we just cut the yarn and hide the end through the mushroom stem using our needle. Okay, so now I have all the tails hidden, this is how the mushroom should look. Now we're moving on to making the base of the jewelry holder. Start by grabbing your dish colored yarn, here I'm just going to be using green. For round one, make a magic ring. So here I'm going to make a magic ring, then pull it off my fingers, and we're going to begin by chaining two. Into this magic ring, we're going to insert 12 double crochet. Once we're done inserting our 12 double crochet, we can go ahead and close the magic ring. Now we will slip stitch in the first stitch of the round to end off round one. After round one, we should have 12 double crochet. 
To begin round 2, we'll chain 2 and double crochet increase in each of the 12 stitches. So going to that same stitch as that chain 2, we will make 1 double crochet and back to that same stitch, we're going to make 2 double crochet. So this is a double crochet increase. Now we'll just repeat this all the way around. Since this is just a repeating pattern, I'm going ahead and speed up here and I'll meet you back at the end of round 2. Now we will slip stitch in the first stitch to end the round. At the end of round 2 we should have 24 double crochet. For round 3 we'll start by chaining 2, making 2 double crochet into that first stitch, and then double crochet once in each of the next 3 stitches. We'll just repeat both steps for the remaining 20 stitches. I'm just going to speed up here since this is just a repeating pattern. I'll meet you back at the end of round 3. Okay, so now that we reached the end of round 3, we'll slip stitch to end the round. At the end of round 3, we should have 30 double crochet. For round 4, we'll start by chaining 2. Then we'll double crochet increase in the first stitch. Let's go into that first stitch and make 2 double crochets. Now we are going to double crochet once in each of the next 4 stitches. We will then repeat both steps for the remaining 25 stitches. Here I'm just going to speed up round 4 and I'll meet you back at the end.
the end of round 4, we will slip stitch to end the round. We should now have 36 double crochet. To begin round 5, we will chain 2 and double crochet twice into that first stitch. Then we will double crochet once in each of the next 5 stitches. We will repeat both steps for the remaining 30 stitches. I'm just going to speed up round 5 and I'll meet you back at the end of round 5. Now we will slip stitch to end the round. At the end of round 5 we should have 42 double crochet. To begin round 6 we will chain 1 and then reverse single crochet into the 42 stitches. So for this round we're going to be working right to left rather than the normal left to right. So skipping that first right stitch we'll insert our hook into the second one and pull up our yarn to complete a single crochet. We'll just repeat this all the way around. Here I'm just going to skip through this round and I'll meet you back at the end of round 6. After this round we'll fasten off leaving a long tail, then we just have to hide the tails and done. Ok 
Okay, so here's how the finished dish look. I'm just going to go ahead and hide the tails and I'll meet you back after that is done. Okay, so now I've hidden the tails and this is how the dish should look now. To make it resemble the jewelry dish a little bit better, we're going to flip the dish inside out so the wrong stitches are facing outwards. And then we're going to flatten the entire piece with our hand. So we can just fix these edges, make it nice and round. And now it should resemble a dish a little bit better. Now the next step will be to attach the mushroom to the dish. Just like this. For this, we're going to start by cutting a long piece of our dish colored yarn. Here I'm just going to be sticking with the green. Then we'll insert it into our needle. Now we will start by placing the base of the mushroom, so this part right here, onto round one of the dish. So just line it up any way you like, just like this, and we're just going to hold this in place while we're sewing. Now use the piece that we cut to sew the mushroom to the dish, making sure to get under both the mushroom and dish stitches to secure them together. So go into the dish, then go into the mushroom and back out to the dish. Make sure you leave a bit of a tail. We will only sew the bottom of the mushroom to the bottom of the dish. This will ensure you not see any of our sewed stitches later on. So start with the dish, grab that bottom of the mushroom, and go back to the dish. And we're just going to repeat this all the way around, so I'll meet you back after that is done. Okay, so now the final step is to hide the tails and we are done with our mushroom jewelry holder. You can weave in the ends or you can just tie the two tails into a knot like I'm doing here. Now we can just cut the tails and hide the knot into the stem of the mushroom using our yarn needle. Now that that's done, we can straighten out our mushroom and straighten out the dish and we are done with our mushroom jewelry holder. This is how the finished product should look. Thank you so much for watching. Please make sure to like and subscribe for more tutorials just like this. And don't forget to check out my shop in the description below for more fun patterns. I would also love to hear what you have to say and what you think in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching. Bye!